And they just uh, giving you an update here on Nicholas. I know the National Hurricane Center just released their one o'clock update and really no changes were made. So really from 10 o'clock this yeah. morning, um, the intensity, the track, um, timing of landfall, it is the exact same at this point. Yeah, no major changes, kind of plateauing in terms of strengthening as it looks right now. But of course, things can change. It's still got about another eight hours over the warm ocean waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll see how that plays on out here over the next, uh, you know, eight to 10 hours and which is interesting yeah. because we had a lot of change overnight and this morning mm -hmm. with the track um, you know we were talking about how the center of circulation last night was in an area in the Gulf and then basically the hurricane hunters flew in um, to find that low and it had shifted northward by a hundred miles you said so yeah um, that changed changed the track significantly overnight for about 4 a.m. this morning absolutely and you know I'm trying to forward our graphics we're okay. having a little bit of some technical you problems go check them out yeah if you can go check them out it looks like our, our computers are freezing now you know up we're live <laughs> it, it happens you know but overall this the track outlook right now with uh, nicholas seems like it's a high-end tropical storm 60 mile an hour winds moving to the north at around 15 miles per hour there we go there's the satellite imagery showing the blow up of convection here over the last 12 hours or so and that's a signal that it is trying to get its act together its track has actually kind of been wobbling too it's been trying to find a defined center of circulation hurricane hunter aircraft was struggling to find the same thing over the past couple of hours and the past couple of missions there uh cheetah if you can forward it along more it looks like it's just not even okay, working wait, at all push, push one yeah, this, it is. Yeah, it's and then try walking, it again. Well, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, we've got a lot of convection no? okay. with this moving to the north at 12 miles an hour, 60 mile per hour uh, sustained winds. There's radar. It's got a ton of tropical moisture with it, and that's going to keep blowing on shore. And we'll see heavy downpours here over the next 12 hours or so. And once the, the center moves over land, it'll start to rain itself out. We'll still see the gusty winds, the onshore flow giving way to some increased storm surge threats. Local radar here, we had band after band of heavy downpours as it's lifting north, kind of falling apart a little bit. And modeling was pretty uh, good at indicating that we'd see a lull here by early afternoon. And it looks to be that's what's shaping up. Off to the south, though, much more widespread heavy rain, and that will be lifting northwards, replacing that lull in activity by later on today. And we'll see more and more heavy rainfall adding to those rainfall totals. Here's a close up of Houston. You see the bright shades of yellow indicating the very heavy rainfall there lifting north rather quickly and on radar right here out of Brownsville you can kind of see that spin and over the last three hours there were multiple almost meso vortices here but now one is trying to kind of take dominance and lift its way to the north it's probably about 150 miles south of uh, Houston at the moment right now so we're seeing the heavy rain there cheetah and it's going to continue lifting north even a little bit of some lightning and thunder and let me there. tell you how great this is because we are on team coverage right now we have addison yep. green another meteorologist Saves here and he's going to help us out okay <laughs> okay um that's right because yeah. <laughs> we've been i think even our, our graphics know um but we're still looking at landfall uh, probably between sometime between nine to midnight right. tonight over Matagorda Bay. That's still going to keep us on the east side, which is the dirty side. And that's where you see these big rain accumulations. In fact, this is going, if you're watching now, um, and you've only seen a few downpours this morning. This is really what we're expecting between about six to 12 inches of rain. Some yeah. of these rainfall rates you've already seen between about one to three inches per hour. So this is a yeah. really good estimate. And even within some of those bands, too, we've seen some gusty winds on top of that. But once this fills on in, it's not just banding, it's just constant rainfall. These numbers will really tick upwards. And some areas have already picked up several inches of rain. Now, this is really interesting. This kind of gives a perspective on just how serious the flood threat is with this. The Weather Prediction Center hardly ever puts out a high risk, the highest tier on their threat index. And that's for a large portion of our area, pretty much all south of I-10, all the way to the coast. And what I think is interesting about this graphic, so kind of a takeaway when you look at this, if we're expecting landfall towards Matagorda Bay, and you get counterclockwise spin around an area of low pressure, well, uh, around Tropical Storm Nicholas, this is what all of that deep tropical moisture will travel. So when you look at that on the radar and you see that just glob of moisture yeah. sitting in the Gulf, this is why that's in effect at these high levels for the potential of flooding because all of that is going to be traveling in that north northwest direction so the greatest risk will obviously be right along the coastline but then that still is a really high risk even areas yep. inland and north of town as well so you know six o'clock tonight through 6 a.m tomorrow morning when you wake up you want to be in place where you are six o'clock tonight and then wake up and see which roadways are passable which ones are flooded but um, but that's the reason why because we are expecting landfall to our southwest right. and then all that rain pumps in just right around it with that 
counterclockwise circulation. And this is just the outlook for today. Tomorrow, it's still a moderate risk for most of the area, level three out of four. So here's the track. We're still again going off at the 10 a.m. because there's no track update in the intermediate advisory at one o'clock. So we were supposed to get if there was any change necessary for the wind speed, uh, the direction of movement and the pressure, but all of that remains static, no changes at all. But the track itself uh, slows it down a little bit by tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. It is overland 50 mile an hour tropical storm, a depression just north of Houston down to 35 miles an hour. But from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., it's not traveling all that far, so that means that the rain is still going to be around. Yeah, basically sitting overhead. And did you see before um, we got this far, max sustained winds upon landfall were at 70 miles per hour. So that would put it just under a Category right. 1 hurricane. If they were at 74 or above, we would have a Cat 1. So it's not out of the realm that we could see this intensify just before landfall to a Cat 1 hurricane. Right. And we've been talking a whole lot about the flood threat because right? for good reason. It's the biggest threat and it'll be the longest lasting, longest duration. But two, you have a tropical system, so you've got the winds. And it's a wind field now that has tropical storm force winds of 40 miles an hour greater, extending out about 100 miles from the center. So we look at the wind gust forecast here, and already by this afternoon, right around now, we're seeing tropical storm wind gusts. And then into this evening, we start to see that wind move inland, 45, 55 mile per hour wind oh, gusts. Yeah. Can't be ruled out, especially in areas like Katy over to Sugarland, Angleton, Galveston. And notice your timeline. I mean, this yeah. is at midnight. Mm -hmm. So this is why we are encouraging everyone to be at place. You know, power outages, this is going to be enough to bring down some power lines, to bring down trees. Power right. outages will be an issue overnight. Grounds will be saturated. So it's just going to be messy out there overnight. And here's the interesting thing. So this model that we're showing here is a model that's outside of the GFS and the European. So this is more of a short range model. And this is the latest run sheet. Remember when we showed this earlier, it had the center of circulation like well off to the southwest. Now this model, at least on this run, shows it moving over Houston itself. Right. So that's a change. That is a change. And the timeline, 8 a.m. Yeah. tomorrow morning. So we'll see. You know, if this picks up speed a little bit more, it'll take some of the stronger winds and some right. of the heavier downpours. But either way, we're looking at a solid 12 hour period where we're looking at tropical storm conditions right. mm -hmm. all across the area. Mm -hmm. And that wind, because the center of the track, most of the track will be off to the west of the city. We've got the onshore winds that you were talking about. Storm surge threat is there. Not talked about out all that much, but two to four feet is nothing to shrug off. And we'll see that inundation there moving on in today, tonight into tomorrow with those winds getting gusty. And anybody who lives along the coast, they know those low lying areas, especially in Galveston and even uh, towards Port Aransas and yeah. Margaret, it, it can be a really serious life threatening threat, yeah. even talking two to four feet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we're wrapping things up. No big changes for you here at the one o'clock advisory. That's right. And the next one will be at four o'clock. Yeah, yes. that'll give us an update on the track, too. So we'll see if there's any changes with that. Until then, Addison and David will join you next.